Relationships Podcast, The Sex Edition. I'm your host, John Johnson. And in this episode, I'm going to talk about what to do when your sex isn't hot or interesting. And I'm going to lead into that by saying I talked to someone this evening and I want to tell you, it's one of my listeners. She is 74. She gave me a couple of ideas. One of the first, yes, 74. She's still having sex. She's still going on with it. And I'm like, yes, something to look forward to folks. And you know what? She mentioned something about safe sex, which obviously seniors have a reason to consider that. Um, You know, I've heard about people who are seniors and they're living in adult community and, you know, retirement communities, that sort of thing. So these are not just nursing home kind of things. And I know I'm, because I'm talking about the age range. So that's why I'm speaking of it, that we as individuals, sometimes as a society, we sort of don't picture older adults having sex, but obviously they are. Okay. I mean, the statistics are out there and I happen to drive past lots of adult communities that's in 55 and older. So obviously they're having sex, but I'm talking about a woman who's 74 and who has no problems with her libido and the interest in has been married. Um, she's no longer married, which isn't a problem for her. The, the thing is, is that she is active and has decided that sex is something that is going to be a part of her life forever because she enjoys it. Um, and, and I'm happy about that thinking about, well, when I get that age, I hope to live that long, that that'll be something that I would be able to do. And you, my listener, I mean, obviously if you're younger and you know, you may not think of age and, uh, or think of being older and having sex because it's just, I mean, because you're, you, you are who you are right now. But here, you know, the topic obviously was brought up by the listener is, you know, talking about the safe sex thing. And, you know, when you're older, the sex for women, oftentimes lubrication is something to consider. And my listener talked about that. Uh, I mean, she's very well educated. She actually has gone to college and studied psychology. So human sexuality is one of those things that is part of the topic of conversation. So she's very well informed, but made it very clear that, um, and, and she's, she's not approved. And I will say that there are lots of women out there, older adults, not just women, men too, but they're older adults out there that are definitely participating in sex. In my last podcast, I talked about older women and younger men, not knowing that I was going to talk to my listener, uh, today and, you know, brought up the topic of, you know, the hotness of sex with age, different partners. And for my listener today, um, it, it's something that she has had. She's had lovers that have been you know, younger than her by say at, at least, you know, a decade or more and found it very rewarding and I'm happy for her. So ladies who are listeners out there who are thinking about your potential partners, um, just sort of a, a replay on what I talked about last week, certainly think about people outside of your age range and younger works. I mean, if you find a gentleman who's a little older than you, who still is as capable of being satisfying, that's great. And you know, sex, and I'm going to explain it this way. You know, when we talk about the hot or interesting. A lot of times we think of sex being intercourse and, and penetration. Well, when you get older, you have to start thinking of alternatives and by that, it isn't always that men can have erections the way they lasted when they were much younger. Testosterone levels drop. Um, there are other medical conditions that could make having an erection a, a challenge for a man. Um, impotence, for one, um, could be on certain medications. All of these kinds of things affect a man's ability to have an erection. And then on the other side of that, for women... Uh, penetration isn't always what they want. You know what? There are vibrators, which in and of themselves make bringing toys into the sex play. Interesting. And, you know, so that that's an option right there, bringing uh, using a vibrator and re-examining, re-exploring your erogenous zones. That is areas on the body that are real sensitive to touch and get you aroused. So if that's something that's sort of 
kind of drifted by the wayside. We haven't thought about that. Well, reconsider that. So when your sex isn't hot or interesting, think about some of these other things. And, and one of the other things my uh, listener had mentioned, cause I, I don't want to mention names cause I don't want to embarrass anyone. And she talked about condoms that are, you know, different colors, which sort of spices up the sex life. And she's very much into wearing costumes or at least has at one time. She mentioned that, um, and being creative and it's so often we sort of take away the, the permission to be experimentative as we get older. I mean, sometimes we don't think of things because we get into patterns, we get into routines. And by doing that, that's why your sex becomes less hot and less interesting because it is just routine. And that's the fastest way to create less intimacy in your relationship and make yourself boring or less interesting to your partner. And you're going to have to come up with ways in which you get out of, out of the routine. Romance is obviously something that happens in the mind and for sex to be interesting. And I'm going to explain this to the guys that are listening for sex to be interesting to women. Romance is a big part of it. It's huge. So in order to get the romance thing happening, guys, it's, this is old school. Be affectionate, but be affectionate in a way that shows you being thoughtful, such as a card, such as flowers, nice words. These things tend to be very comforting, very soothing for a woman. And when you approach it from that way, then it's, uh, you know, it seems more a palatable for a woman because women like to be wooed. That's how they approach it. Now for women who are listening, and if you are feeling like your sex isn't hot or interesting, I ask you to take on the idea of getting out of your comfort zone because very often, and this is something I hear women talk about, they don't necessarily like sex with the lights on because they feel unattractive. So let me share with you a man's perspective of that. Men like looking at your body. They appreciate being able to see you however you are a few pounds here and there. This, that that's, that's not a man's worry. Men are interested in being pleasing and being appreciated. And when you do that by making yourself available and thinking about from the man's perspective, the hotness of being spontaneous, being present and being sexual in that way, then it's, it, it, it really increases the interest. And for men, that's what they, that's what they want. Oftentimes men like frequency. They want it when they can get it. And when you're a willing participant and, and, and are enjoying it, men are off the chart and they will do anything for you to keep it in that space. Men really like pleasing you. It's something of a way of communicating that when you let your needs be known, men, your man, the man in your life will respond. I, I was, I was saying men generically, but I'm going to personalize it. The man in your life will respond. He just wants to know what it is and, you know, give it a shot. It would be interesting to see your man's reaction when in fact you put on something that is sexy and subtle. It doesn't have to be over the top, but consider that notion in the morning of wearing something really sexy before he leaves for work. If that's your arrangement, or maybe when you leave for work, put something on and say, this is what's going to come up later and say, see you later, honey. That creates some interest. That'll create some heat, some friction. Tell him, give him some direction. Tell him to come home, take a shower. And when he does, 
it's on. Look, I'm going to take a break and I'll be right back. Stay tuned. Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome back to Golden State Media Concepts Relationships Podcast, the sex edition. Well, where I left off and it was talking about what to do in order to create some hotness in your sex life, because if it isn't hot or interesting, then who's going to want to do it? Ladies, here's an idea. Take a shot. Take a take your phone, take your cell phone out. Put one of your sexiest high heels on and take a picture of that and then send that to your man. And he's going to know what that means, because if that's not something you've ever done before, see, this is where you get creative. You just start thinking of things out of thin air. And, you know, just about anything would work because it's it's out of the it's out of the norm and it's going to create some interest. It's going to create some heat. And this is all G rated. See, this this isn't hard at all. And as you get your creative juices flowing, then it gets better and better. See, we're changing it up because one of the, what happens in relationships is that the sex or the approach to it is just, it's ritualistic. It's routine. And sometimes, sometimes it's not even existent. So and what's the reason for that? It could just be overwhelmed. You're just overloaded. And I've even talked before about people scheduling time to have your intimacy between you and your partner, because it's just as important as anything else in your life. When you and your partner are not connecting, then there's obviously going to be disappointment. There's going to be a breakdown. And I mean, you two are obviously trying to go the same direction with this. So this is the reason why you want to take a step back and take time out for yourselves. It's just as important as anything else. And I think if you express that to your partner, the, 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 what's going to happen is that the mind is going to kick in with that. That's going to be appreciation on so many levels. And that's why you do it because you're doing it for your partner. You're doing it for the relationship. And remember, there's three entities. There's you, there's your partner, and there's a relationship. And there are things that you do for the relationship, even when you don't feel like it, because that's what helps it survive. Ther therapists talk about this sort of thing all the time. And it sort of surrounds the, the idea of understanding what empathy is about, understanding what your partner is going through. And when you can express that, that sort of love and understanding for your partner, then it, it becomes reciprocal because I mean, somebody has to start and hopefully it's you, you start. And it's also the part of investing in your relationship, in your sex life, because that's something that we're trying to revive here. And this, these are some of the, the ways in which we go about doing it. Um, and, and as I had shared at the top of the show, one of my listeners has had sex for, many years and the way she kept things interesting and exciting is she would do the dress up thing. She would, would put on something that was relatively, it, it would seem almost innocent at first, but you know, she'd come out with a bathrobe and then have a sexy costume underneath. And this was something that her man really appreciated. I says, wow, you know, that's cool. I mean, and remember now she's 74 but she's been doing things like this all of her life. She explained or all of all of her sexual history. So even though it's not something that we necessarily think of older people doing. So if you're an older person and you're doing that, great. If you haven't thought of it, great. See, this is sort of adds to some of the spice. And while I personally have never been one that as that, that drinks that that's just not my thing. I don't have a taste for it, but some people love to go out and enjoy a little bit of bubbly, a little, enjoy a little bit of celebration, and that helps them loosen up. Now, definitely don't drink and drive. We don't advocate that. You must be safe. You can do Uber. You can do Lyft. There's, there, take a taxi, designate a driver. 
So definitely be safe with that. But and and that also sort of frees you up to just focus on each other and in a real intimate way. Go somewhere different. You got to change it. You have to. Now, if you've had difficult sex, and I'm talking about something that physically has not worked for you physically, it's painful. Let's say if a woman, if you were having problems with lubrication, then it could be hormonal and there's answers for that. But that's where you bring a doctor into the conversation. And if, and if it's not there, maybe consider using lubes. There's lots of things out there in the pharmacy that you could try because that would make it, um, less, less, of, of anxiety producing for you because if you've had painful sex, then obviously you're going to be turned off to it. And guys, I think it's important that you ask your woman what might be your reason for not being interested in when, and, and that should be a sincere conversation because this isn't something where we're going to try to criticize our partner because we need what we need to understand what it is our partner is feeling. So ask the question and if it's painful, well then Find out what you can do about it for a woman. It could be hormonal. Um, it could be the lube. And you know what? If you don't necessarily go to the pharmacy to pick up something, hey, olive oil works too. I mean, I don't know anyone who's allergic to olive oil, but it's, it works as a great lube. And not only for sex, but also for massages. And it's natural. It's good stuff. Um, for guys... Now, if you have issues with uh, an erection, and women will tell you this, especially as we mature, they will decide that, you know, intercourse, you know, penetration isn't necessarily the only thing that's interesting. Because as a young man, that's where we kind of decided that that's what was important to a woman. And a lot of times we didn't ask women what was important to them. And now that you may have reached a place in your life where that's not something that you can do every day, you have to learn other techniques. So to the younger men who are listening to this, it's always a good time to practice other techniques. Oral sex is great. Uh, massages are great. And you know, mutual massages are great too. But massages are great and soft words and set the mood, change the music, change a little bit of the lighting. And like I said, ladies, men really like looking at you. Men are visual. And, and, and as we're discovering more and more, women are visual, too. So, guys, remember, take care of yourselves and come to the room ready. Be available, body, mind and soul. And, you know, something I haven't mentioned yet, it's, you know, there are tons and tons of books out there that relate to sex and there are videos that relate to sex too. And I, and I'm not just talking pornography. I'm talking about the kinds of videos that really teach people how to be different, a different kind of lover and a different kind of partner. You can do a little research on that. Uh, I'm not here promoting anyone in particular. I'm just promoting the idea. So that's why I haven't given any specific names, but it's, it's okay. And what you will see in some of these videos is you will see couples trying to be pleasurable to their partner in different ways. You'll see, you know, taking a bath together, taking a shower together, um, the massage. And, and, and I've mentioned that uh, many times, you know, the soft words, the, the words of, of intimacy and understanding. And, you know, another thing that really helps with intimacy, just having a a nice conversation of concern about each other. And it doesn't have to be anything heavy. See, we're, we're, that's, I think women, and I'm going to say this about guys, guys really concern themselves when you want to talk. And when you say the words, we need to talk, it just strikes terror in a guy because he, he just, just sort of locks up. Now I'm going to take a break and I'm going to talk about how to talk to a man so that you don't scare him off. Okay. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts. Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The golden state media concepts podcast network is here. 
Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Hello and welcome back to Golden State Media Concepts Relationships Podcast, the sex edition. And the subject here is when your sex isn't hot or interesting. Now, as I ended that last segment, I was talking about, hey, women, how to talk to your man so that he will want to be in conversation about this. Because remember, he's as interested in this as you are. And, And I don't care what the age is of your man. When you tell a guy we need to talk, it strikes terror in a guy's heart because he thinks what's happening is you're going to lecture him about something he did wrong. And what I'm trying to do here is say, create an atmosphere for a conversation so that you can have some intimate talk and it will lead to a change in the mood so that you guys can have great sex so that you can have great intimacy. And by sex, I'm not just talking about penetration. I'm talking about having something that works for both of you helps with the closeness. See, that's what makes sex hot and interesting. It makes it memorable because we oftentimes get into routines with our relationships, well, with our habits and we, and and then we get out of cycle. We get off schedule. We get disconnected and it's that disconnected feeling is what leads to the frustration and that part, then what follows is resentment on both parts. I mean, Men feel resentment inside. And I think oftentimes we get passive aggressive about how we express it because we we let it build and then we don't know how to talk about it. So when the resentment builds, then we just, we get disconnected. And I think in a lot of cases in relationships, we get afraid to talk about it because we, because as guys, you know, the one thing we do, we fear that, okay, if we say something and that we piss the woman off, then we are getting nothing. So we hold out and hope that she will read our mind and then give us what we want. Well, that's, that's the hope, but you know, it's not realistic. So guys, it's, it's not realistic to expect that, but what you have to learn to do is you have to learn to communicate when, and and in a way that's palatable, it's, you know, when you're frustrated, you're frustrated. There's, you don't have to not be frustrated when something is not right, but how you message that makes all the difference in the world. And I'm saying this, I'm going to say this to both partners, how you message your frustration in anything matters all the difference in the world. Because if you say it in a way that's mean and, and, or sounds mean spirited, then like I said, it's going to create resentment. So that is not going to build hot or interesting sex. You're going to have to learn how to talk to each other in ways that are sensitive, sincere, and it's about building a connection. That's what works. Um, you know, people struggle with communication all the time. So it goes down to a basic question of how do we communicate with each other, but you need to learn each other's styles and you have to practice that. Because you get better at it when you practice it and and when you're deliberate about practicing it, not just because you want something, but because you want to develop a better style of communicating with your partner. And then, you know, you can kind of create your own secret code is you, you, you hear about couples who sort of have, you know, their, their love language, their, their secret code. Well, when you've been involved with somebody 
for a long period of time, then you kind of have this, you can almost finish each other's sentences because you're, you're that connected. You can kind of look at each other across the room and, and get a sense of where the other person is at. You know, that's, you know, that, that's kind of, uh, that kind of heats things up. So when you need to make an exit, you guys know how to cover for each other. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about that kind of closeness Well, you have to work at having that. And when you as partners feel that, you know, you go in the right direction. And you can start talking about some of the things that you'd like to do with each other. Have fun. Spend the one-on-one time together. And I think it's really great to plan a little surprises. If you have a significant other who, say, spends a lot of time in the car, sneak in there and put a nice note on the steering wheel. I mean, you don't have to go out and buy a fancy car. I'm just talking about something uh something sweet on a post-it note and put it on the steering wheel where they won't miss it or put it next to their car keys. See, that's the kind of thoughtful stuff I'm talking about. That's what will help heat up your sex and make it interesting because it's the little things like that. See, for guys, I'm going to tell you this. It's the little things like that that matter to women because that is the kind of thoughtful planning stuff because most guys don't do that kind of thing. So that's how you become special in her eyes. And and for women, here's something I want to mention. You know, I was talking about how guys dread the conversation when you say we need to talk because they fear that whatever comes out of your mouth, they will lose, that they're just, they're losing ground. Learn to reassure the men when you bring up something like that, that this is not, that they have not failed. They have not let you down. Because that's what a man fears. He fears letting you down. And let me tell you what that does to a man. It deflates him and it doesn't make him feel masculine. It doesn't make him feel sexy. And if this is something that you may have, you sense that your man might be feeling a a, a little deflated, it would really be helpful if you have a conversation with him about that. He may not want to bring it up because Sometimes we as men, we don't even know that that's what we're doing, that we're feeling that way. So it really helps in terms of the relationship investment when you draw us out as men. Because like I say, sometimes we don't know we're feeling that. But when you start to draw us out and then, you know, things might start to come to the surface. And it really helps a man to know that he's being loved. Because when you're drawing him out, then he he knows that you care. So it's, you know, it, it's, it might sound like it's asking you to read his mind. And, you know, I don't want to take it that far because sometimes it's really not about that as much as it is showing that you care. And then once you get it lit, then it starts to flow. The understanding starts to happen and we know the direction that this is going. It, we, it seems like it's going to be a win and then we want to participate because when we're in that place, then we know that it's all good. It's going the right direction. See guys fear things going the wrong direction and then it taking them away from what they want, which is to be able to experience intimacy with you, their partner they They don't want it from, uh, you know, the, the, you know, the fantasy girl up the street, because that's, that's, that's not tangible. You know, sometimes they could talk about fantasies and things like that, but you know, guys like tangibility. It's, it's, you know, the guys look at porn films and things like that. But for those that do, I'm telling you guys, I mean, it's, you're not making love to your woman. When you're looking at the film, you need to be with your woman to do that. So ladies, If you got a man, have him listen to at least the last segment here so we can get some idea of where he's at and then get him reprogrammed in the right way. And guys, if you've been listening to this program with your partner, good for you, because I think the two of you together listening to some of my ideas are going to be able to have a much better relationship, sexual relationship going forward. And when it isn't hot or interesting, you now have some ideas about how you can turn up the heat and have a good, healthy sex life. I want the best for you. And this is the Golden State Media Concepts Relationships Podcast, the sex edition. 
I want to thank you for listening. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network, from movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.